I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I'm setting up a new quad, and I want to show you a one weird trick. Clickbait. I want to show you one weird trick that I have for setting up quads quickly. Now, I know that most people out there are not setting up as many quads as I set up. I do this a lot. So I've developed necessity is the mother of invention. That's what they say. I've developed a way of doing it pretty quickly, and it can be useful, especially when you get like you buy a quad from somebody else and they've tuned it, but it's not set up exactly how you want. Or if you're just setting up a brand new fresh build, the thing is there's a few things that are the same for all of your builds. They repeat it. And I'm going to show you how to sort of extract those things and paste them into a new build really quickly and easily. So I'm going to plug in my quad and I'm going to hit connect. And if this is a brand new quad, you're going to set it up manually one time. Okay. So go do that. And if you need help with that, go check out my Betaflight 3.3 Ultimate Setup Guide video, which walks you through a Betaflight configuration. But the assumption right now is that this is a quad that's set up exactly how you like it. And we're kind of going to use this as a template for all quads going forward. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to the command line and I'm going to type diff, D-I-F-F, -F, all, A-L-L, -L, and hit enter. And what that's going to do is that's going to output all of the things about your configuration that you have changed from the default. Okay, so when you get a fresh quad, these are the things that you would change about the quad to make it look like this quad looks. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit save to file and I'm gonna save that out. And let's just save this. Let's, uh, I've got a folder here where I save all my flight controller configs. Let's just save this as um, I'm just going to name it config example. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Then I'm going to open that file in my text editor. And what I want to do here is I want to remove all of the parts of this that are specific to this quad and leave behind all of the parts of this that I want to apply to every other quad I build going forward. So uh, let's take the diff all. Obviously, we don't need that. And when you see a line that starts with a little hash mark like this, that means that it's a comment. You can take that out or leave. It doesn't really matter. We're going to take that out. Uh, reset configuration to defaults. No, 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 no. See, we don't, when we paste this stuff in, we don't, we want to add this stuff to whatever's already on the config. Not, we don't want to default it. So we'll take that out. Now for the name, the name of my quad is going to be different every time. So let's just start with name, know it all. That's my call sign. If you use the same call sign on all your quads, that's fine. I like to give each of my quads a unique name so I can see in the DVR footage which quad I'm flying. But many people would just have their call sign here. Let's keep going. Uh, if you had any resource reassignments, like if you moved your motors around, that would show up under resources. That's not going to be something that's going to be the same on every quad. That's going to be specific. So she, there's no, we're not going to keep that. Custom mixer, that's going to be specific to the quad. The servos and the servo mix. Now, I don't have anything there, but if you did have something there, you would delete it because that's all specific to the quad. That's not something that's going to be universal. For the features, here are the features that I leave and I'm going to leave in here. I usually want telemetry turned on on every quad. Uh, even if I don't have a telemetry receiver, like the XM Plus doesn't do telemetry, I'll just turn this feature on. It just doesn't really hurt much to have it on. And it just it saves me the trouble of having to remember to turn it on. I like to have air mode enabled on all my quads. I like to have anti-gravity enabled. And I like to have dynamic filter enabled on all my quads. As we get into Betaflight 3.3 and the filters change, maybe I'll change that. Maybe I'll take that out and I won't have that on all my quads. But for now, that's how I'm going to have it. Let's take a look at the beeper. Um, this is actually a ready to fly quad and it came with this setting. This is not how I usually do it, but the beeper settings control when the quad will beep at you. And if you're tired of it beeping all the freaking time, you can turn on or off the options in the command line. Right. In the configuration tab, right down here in the beeper configuration, you can turn these on or off however you like. So it beeps only when you want it to. And then you can save that stuff here and it will all, and all your quads will be set up the same. The map line here has to do with your channel mapping. Uh, this is definitely something you would probably want to include in your default setup because your transmitter is going to be the same for every quad and you're going to have the same channel mapping. Now my channel mapping happens to match the default and that's why there's nothing here. But if you had a custom channel order or channel mapping, you would want to keep this line. 
The serial line, you're gonna get rid of because the serial ports, the UARTs, are gonna be different for every flight controller you've got. However, if you have a fleet of quads and they all have the same flight controller in them, like if you're a racer with five or six of the same exact quads, maybe you would leave those serial lines in because the UARTs are gonna be identical for each of your setups. That's your call. You, you can tweak this as you see fit. LED strip. This is probably something that is going to be unique to each quad because most quads aren't going to have the exact same LED layout if you have LEDs at all. LED colors, that's all going to get deleted. The aux lines here are your, your aux modes. Let me just show you where that is in the configurator in case that's not clear. Here in the modes tab, we've got an arming mode, I've got a beeper mode, and I've got a turtle mode right here. Now those are the same on all of my quads. I use the same model for all my quads. I've got a video about how you can use the same model for all your quads on your Tyrannus. It uses a feature called Model Match. I'll put that down in the video description if you wanna look into that. If you've got 27 models on your Tyrannus, one for each of your quads, you need to go watch this video. It's gonna save you a lot of trouble. Okay, so my aux modes are the same for all my quads and so they're in this master template setup. And this is in-flight adjustments. I've also got a video about in-flight adjustments that's here. I use this to adjust PIDs in flight. Uh, that's something I set up on all my quads in case I need to do any, any in-flight tuning. You would pr most people would probably not have this, but if you have any custom settings like changing your rates or anything, you would leave this in. RX range is used if you cannot get your channels to, to get to 1,000 and 2,000 microseconds here in the receiver tab, you can use RX range if for some reason your transmitter won't do that. Basically, if you have tweaked this value, then you probably need to keep these lines because these lines relate to your transmitter, more, not the quad. So this is gonna need to be the same for every quad that you've got. And if you haven't tweaked this, it'll be blank and you can get rid of it. RX fail is your fail safe settings. I keep these, I have these the same on all of my quads, and probably you're gonna do the same thing. You probably want consistent fail-safe behavior on all your quads. Then we come here to these, this is just a mishmash of settings, uh, and some of these are gonna be the same, some of them aren't. Uh, I, I'll tell you which ones I would keep. Uh, min check, uh, I'm gonna keep it. I set my channel uh, endpoints exactly right on all my quads. So min check can be the same on all of them. And I set it to 1010 because my throttle channel is, on my channels always go to 1000 and 2000 at the end points. I have an RSSI channel set up to put RSSI in my OSD. I set that up on all my quads. And some of my quads don't support that, but there's no harm in having this there. It doesn't, if it doesn't support it, then it just, it just doesn't hurt anything. Um, let's see what else we've got. This stuff is all specific to the quad. Set failsafe delay. I'm not sure why that's not in the, I guess it's okay. Failsafe delay of five, that's a failsafe setting. I keep that, as I said, the same on all of them. The battery capacity is when the OSD is gonna start screaming at you that you've been flying too long. I just set that to like 5,000 because I just, I don't wanna change that for each of my batteries. I just set it to a high value so that warning never goes off. The VBAT max cell voltage of 41, that's 4.1 volts, is that right? This is interesting, I'm gonna learn something today. 4.1, that's interesting, maybe that's why. You know, I've noticed sometimes that my quad misreads a four cell battery as a five cell, a full four cell as an empty five cell. I wonder if that's related to this. I'm gonna raise this to, well, sometimes I run high volts. Let's raise this to like 436. Let's see what, I don't know. But that's gonna be the same for all my quads, so let's leave that. The current meter and the VBAT scale, that's all gonna be specific to the flight controller. This is the current scale. That's gonna be specific to the flight controller, so we'll delete that. The beeper D-shot beacon tone causes the D-shot beeper to occur. I leave that in my, my template because many of my quads don't have a buzzer and I just use the, the motors, the, the D-shot beeper, which makes the motors beep instead. Set small angle equals 180, disable small angle protection. It means that the quad will arm even if it's not perfectly flat. I do that on all my quads. Uh, you should be aware if you do that, that you are disabling an important safety check and you need to understand what you're doing when you do it. 
PID process DDOM, that relates to the loop time. We'll delete that. That's going to be different on different quads. For example, an F4 might run at 8K, an F3 might run at 4K. It's going to be specific. These lines here that start with set OSD, I'm going to add that in there. Set OSD, now this is all the OSD positions. And if you're tired of setting up the OSD manually on all your quads, beautiful. Just save all of this and just leave these lines. And then here we get to the end, set debug mode equals notch. I don't know why that's that way, but that doesn't need to be for every quad. And we'll take that stuff out too. Now we're into the PID profile. I like to leave the D-term low pass type at PT1 on all of my quads. Uh, I might also consider turning off the gyro notches. I do that on almost all of my quads, but I'm not sure I want to do that on every single quad I ever set up. So I'll leave this how it is. I like to have an anti-gravity gain of three on basically all my quads. So I'll leave that in the template. And I like my D-term set point weight to be 1.0, which is, this is, this line does that. Now these PIDs are specific to this quad. So I'm going to delete them out of the template. This stuff can all go. It's not doing anything. And here we are, rate profile zero. These are my rates. Uh, and I'm going to leave these in the template because I like to start with the same rates for all my quads. Um, if I was going to do like a quad with race rates, I might have two different templates perhaps and, and set different rates. But these are my freestyle rates. I leave them the same on base. That's where I start with basically all my quads. And that's it. So now I'm going to save this. And what I can do is when I've got a new quad that I'm just beginning to set up, I can copy this. Copy all of that. I go over to the command line and paste it in. And then hit enter. And now, ta-da! All of that stuff has been entered. And now I can go back. And if I want to, I can, I need to type save to save it. But I can go back and I can go in and I can tweak the things that are specific to this quad. So for example, you know, if I go to the ports tab, I, I need to set up the serial RX for this flight controller. If I go to configuration, I might need to set up the loop time for this flight controller. But all of the things that are universal, they're all set up. It's a beautiful thing. It saves a lot of time and it's a lot quicker at setting up a new, a new quad. So there you go. Hope that was helpful. Uh, tweak that to your, to your needs, or you can just kind of copy what I did. I, it's why I took the time to talk you through it. So if you don't really understand what all that config dump stuff is, then, uh, then now you do. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.